Well, another day is here, and I was going to put you together a little something on uh, electronic throttle bodies. They've been around for probably 20 years now. Um, they can seem kind of mysterious if you hadn't really, you know, fooled with them very much and all. Uh, but uh, this is not going to cover anything and everything and everything about. But it just gives you a little bit of, a, of an overview, and I got a couple of little short stories I can tell you. Uh, but we need the throt we need the blade on a gasoline. Powered engine because you know the throttle blade is basically what allows the air to go in so you can get your power. On a diesel, you increase your power by adding more fuel, but there's no throttle blade except on some of the ones that use it for uh, to facilitate EGR flow in the early 2000s. Um, but uh, initially, your carburetor had its throttle blade, and it would air would go rushing through the venturi, and it would create low pressure, and it would pull fuel out of the reservoir, uh, you know, through that jet, you know. Uh, a carburetor is almost works almost like a commode that flushes into the engine, <laughs> except it's you know working with gas and all. Uh, but uh, there was a vin that, and then venturi is above the throttle plate. Of course, you had some idle passages and all that. No point in going into that right now. The throttle valve is connected through linkage to the accelerator pedal, controls the amount of air fuel mixture entering the vein. On some of the like on your F series, uh, you might even notice that they had a little. Uh, cable going out there to this throttle plate and it had a double link kind of a thing uh, that was hooked to those throttle plates and the reason they did that was because if you just hooked it directly to the throttle plates you know it would basically not open evenly it would start out and open too fast and it would be hard to determine you know hard to hard to drive the doggone thing so they basically had to put a double link to time the opening of it so it would be smooth all the way they didn't want it to start out open it slowly and then speed up or whatever, you know, there's a rationale behind that. Um, so the throttle blade is on a gas burner directly controls the power output of the engine. That's what I was talking about earlier. And so you morphed the, the uh, carburetors into uh, throttle body injection. You know, your GM throttle body injection only had about 12 or 13 pounds of pressure. But some of the other throttle bodies, you know, like on your Fords and your Chrysler, would have 40 pounds of pressure for one of those. I don't know why GM said pressure was so low there, because uh, the higher the pressure, the better it atomizes. One way or another, uh, that's what that. But you still had the throttle plate, and the injectors were putting the fuel above the throttle plate, and some of it would drop out, you know, drop off on the way to the cylinder, and you'd have it on the inside of the intake, uh, beading up in there, you know. <clears throat> so basically, that's you know where they went with the fuel injection and all that, and the electronic throttle body replaced the carburetor and its throttle plate. Of course you already had your fuel injection down there. So now you've got like basically you got drive by wire is how that works. Alright. And so uh, fuel injection's got to be an engine controller making decisions on the fly, some of them related to choices of the driver, some related to other things. The throttle plate and its function, see the IEC does not open for some reason on these old kind. This is not an electronic throttle body. This is one that's pulled by cable. Well, if that IEC is stuck or doesn't open or whatever, it depends on that air that it opens all the way up whenever you're starting it to get, give it some air. That's why the no-touch starting is what they call that for years. And then if, if, it's, if it's stuck shut, it'll foul the plugs and stuff. Uh, unless somebody's smart enough to put their foot on the gas a little bit. Now, the ones that used to drive vehicles had carburetors on them. You know, the first thing you did was you get the gas and they set the choke and it wet the manifold and fire it up. And then the choke would open up within about... 90 seconds at the most, sometimes less than a minute. And whenever that happened, you'd wind up with, uh, you know, a good uh, lean running engine and all that like you were supposed to have. But uh, if that idle air control stuck shut, you'd have starting problems. Uh, so it's, it's a good, it's, got, it's supposed to have some little bit of air when you're first starting it up. The throttle plate takes the place of idle air control. And, uh, you know, so anytime it wants to control it, it can do it with that. Well, when the vehicle's first started, the driver doesn't have to do anything but turn the key. The idle air control opens all the way up, and the injectors double pulse to wet the manifold, like an old accelerator pump used to do on the carburetor, and the engine always needs what it used to need. I mean, there's nothing that engine needs now that it didn't need before. Extra fuel and air for a cold start. And it, had, it even had a little fast idle. All right. At key on, when you switch on the key, the engine controller gathers data from here and other places, barometric pressure, coolant, air temperature, and closed throttle voltage, which is stored for the entire engine cycle until the key is off. Uh, any of these inputs don't line up with reality, there's going to be issues. And I've seen that a few times. Also, wide open throttle 
on a lot of platforms, not all of them, but wide open throttle shuts the injectors off a lot. The injectors also turn off when you're coasting down a hill. And uh, because whenever you're coasting, and the old Ford algorithm used to be written in a calculated pulse width of less than 1.2 milliseconds at an engine speed greater than 1200 RPM, the injectors are turned off. And that was means when you're coasting down a hill, you, you know, your fuel injection would shut down. Why do you need fuel injection when you're coasting down a hill and you're not pulling anyway? Um, all right. At engine start, the engine controller PCM reads the RPM, airflow, manifold pressure, and adjust idle speed and fuel delivery. Now this one here, uh, this idle air control works by increasing the amperage and it pulls it open a little further or pop it against the spring. And this one right here is a stepper motor and there's a bunch of different ways these stepper motors are wired. You'll, you can have two of them just alike off two different vehicles and sometimes off the same make in different years and they're wired up different ways. Uh, but the ones on the old Jeeps that used to be wired up would have one wire that was hot all the time and the other ones would walk through to slowly turn that thing and move that thing in and out. That, that's what the steps were all about. Okay, and the, the old Toyota uh, and the, some of the Asian makes, not just Toyota, but some of these Asian makes would have these uh, idle air controls that had a doggone wax element in them and water going through them and all that. And some of those stupid things would cost five, six hundred dollars. You can buy one of these for between fifteen and a hundred bucks, but if you have to have one of those, uh, you know, one of those that's got the water flowing through it and the electrical circuit in there as well, you're going to pay a heck of a lot more for it. I, that's just ridiculous. One time the uh, IT guy that was working at the college, he had a little uh, Toyota, and uh, he had a, uh, and this is also, there's a, there's a, there's a two vehicles I was working on. One of them was a, uh, a Ford 500 uh, that we were pricing out some uh, throttle body and uh, accelerator pedal assembly on and all that stuff. And the other one was this Toyota, and this Toyota had a little vapor sensor, it was vaguely like a mass air, I mean a map sensor. It, uh, some of you guys might be familiar with that little thing. And uh, from Toyota, that thing was $200. You could put that little piece of plastic in your mouth and close your mouth and nobody would know you had it in your mouth. That's how little it was on that 87 model, I mean on that uh, 97 model Camry. Uh, well, this uh, Ford, uh, 2005 Ford 500, um, we, I was pricing out a accelerator pedal and throttle body just because you know sometimes you just feel what would it cost to change this. That accelerator pedal assembly with the sensors on it and the throttle body costs less money than that one little sensor. And this is buying from the dealer, both of them. That one little sensor was $200, a throttle body and an accelerator pedal sensor at the time I was doing that work was only 145 bucks. And you got all this hardware for 145 bucks, you got a teeny piece of plastic whatever with some junk on the inside of it from Toyota. It was going to be 200 bucks. Anyway, um, the idle speed will initially be higher at first start than it is with warm engine. If the AC is on or the steering wheel's turned, the idle speed will increase to meet the added load demand. The throttle body does all this on the ones with electronic throttle body. When the throttle begins to open, the PCM monitors the amount and speed of throttle opening. A lot of times you don't think about it. It wants to know how fast you're opening the throttle, too. And there's some scan tool pins that show you that. And some extra injector pulses expands the injector pulse to its width opening based on engine load. When I used to have the uh, SBDS machine, which basically the SBDS machine could either read uh, scan data or it could do this, uh, it could read right off the, you know, you, you could plug it in between the wire harness and the uh, engine controller and it would read every single wire. It could give you a scope reading on every single wire instantaneously. Beautiful gray screen, colorful. You could tell it which stuff to look at. I just love that machine. It was just my best friend for nearly 10 years. I used it every day on several cars. Um, I, got, I got another story I could tell you about that. I don't know if I got time right now. Anyway, I was noticing that when it, and it would instantaneously catch stuff that you won't get on serial data. You'd have to have a scope to see it. But on these fuel injectors, it would basically give you a little square wave thing showing you when the fuel injectors were clicking. And I noticed when you would crack the throttle, you'd get a bunch of extra pulses on the fuel injectors, which basically takes the place of what the accelerator pump was doing on the old carburetors. That's what the deal was on that. Anyway, why do throttle plates have a little bitty hole in them right there? Do you ever think about that? Um, all right, that's a pretty important question. It's not hard to figure out. You know, if the throttle plates closed or kind of sledged up, you still got air flowing through that hole. Uh, electronic throttle control was first used on vehicles in 1986. 
Now these electronic throttle systems were limited by cost, so only high performance vehicles with traction control were equipped with that. This right here is an SC300. Um, it's a, it was a Lexus. And this plate right here, and Lincoln's had this too, this plate right here, if you got to where you were spinning the wheels too much or going too fast, this plate would close. It would take control of your airflow to protect you from your own stupidity and wreck the car. And so this was, this is actually one of those throttle bodies. It's pretty pricey. You see that motor. And this was from way back, you know, a long time ago. This is not 86, but this is, uh, I'm trying to remember what year model. It was an early, it was an 02 or 03 or something like that. But this throttle body down here on the bottom, this it was cable driven, but this one up here on the top. And on the Lincolns that had uh, electronic, had traction control, the Mark 8s, they had a throttle plate like that that would close. You know, they, there's all kinds of detorquing that goes on nowadays whenever you're spinning the wheels too much. Less hardware needed, but you got to have more software. Uh, electronic uh, traction control eliminates the hardware already needed for idle speed control, cruise control, and all that. How many of you guys ever put cruise control on one? Uh, I bought my uh, 07 F-150, uh, and it was it was a base truck. It had nothing on it except air conditioning, power steering. It had an AM, FM radio, but not even any kind of a player on it. And uh, that's what it, that's the way it came, and uh, it had that was it. You're looking at a steering wheel with an airbag on it, and you're looking at an automatic transmission, and you got air conditioning, you got crank up windows, you got mat in the floor. I bought that truck for twelve thousand uh, dollars, and it was only about a. I think I bought it in '09. It only had sixty-eight thousand miles on it. The reason they sold it so cheap is nobody really wants one that doesn't have any accessories on it. But one of the things I wanted was cruise control. So I went in, I, I said, is there a cruise control kit put on this truck? Because it has an electronic throttle body on it. You know? They said, no, you can't get that. And so I investigated that, and I went and bought a $52 set of cruise control buttons, took that airbag off it, popped those buttons on there, plugged the wires into the airbag clock spring, because there was a place to plug them in, and went over there at the time. I didn't have an IDS at the school, so I went over to Jimmy, the guy that I got working at the Ford place over there, and he went in there and told it with the IDS that I had cruise, and I've had cruise control on my truck since the war. All the stuff is there on a vehicle like it. All you got to do to put cruise on it is add the buttons and go in there with the IDS and tell it it's got cruise. And all of a sudden it wakes up the cruise function, and you have to add no other hardware except for the buttons. I used to also do that on power stroke diesel. I'd have to have a brake pressure switch uh, and that kind of thing, but at the, on the other part of that coin, it was very easy to put the buttons on there if you knew how to do it, and you can make you can put cruise control on a power stroke real easy back in the day. I did that. I've done that several times. But anyway, uh, PCM can control the throttle plate, can handle either function or part of its own algorithms. Now, throttle by wire, you'll have a redundant sensor over here. You'll have more than one. You lock on your military aircraft and on planes, and all you'll have uh, multiple hydraulic lines going to do the same job in case one of them gets punctured or something. This is the same way. It's a safety thing, and the throttle position sensor is usually part of the throttle motor rather than being on the other side. It'll all be built in together up there, usually. All right, redundancy for safety dictates there will be more than one sensor on the accelerator pedal, but the sensors while sending in pedal movement and position aren't the same voltage. You'd think they all be the same voltage, but they're not. This particular uh, setup right here that you're seeing right here is one from an early Duramax diesel. Those are your voltage ranges on that. Now, on your old power strokes that were drive by wire because they had that, uh, you know, the engine controller was controlling the fuel. You didn't have, a, you know, anything going to an injector pump out there where you could move a cable. Uh, they had an idle validation switch and they had a potentiometer. If those two things didn't agree, then it wouldn't do anything but idle. And you'd have to put, I had to put several fuel, I mean, uh, pedals and sensor assemblies on there. You don't just replace the sensor, you put a whole pedal on there because they didn't want you adjusting the thing wrong and having it run away. All right. So, two sensor systems, two sensor systems vary in their patterns. The waveform here shows the throttle opening from wide, idle to wide open throttle and back to idle. See, that, this one here doesn't have near as much of a, a definition as that one there does, but they're both supposed to agree. And it calculates an average of the two signals, and this lets the pedal position be calculated with greater accuracy. These two sensor systems right here, this right here is a, a Nissan, as I remember. Uh, and you can see your throttle position and your accelerator pedal position, see your AP is over here and your throttle position is over there, and it's built into this unit here. Uh, and basically you can see how those signals do. They're like, they mirror one another on that one. This signal here and that signal there are mirrors. And these right here, one of them is not as high as the other one, but they're both showing you pretty much the same thing. 
So this one was redundant and that one's redundant on that one. Now GM started using electronic throttle control on a lot of pickups and SUVs around 2000, but the Delphi controller they had wasn't fast enough to provide throttle opening with its concurrent APPS input. So they added another module. If you remember where the cruise control module was on the old Chevy, this little throttle control module is in the same doggone spot uh, where that was. And it is a little a funky little uh, controller. It's got this, you know, little circuits in there. And that little thing right there, we had a truck that we, uh, it was a barn truck that we got that was the 03 model uh, that it wouldn't do anything but idle. And there was some rat damage on the wires that went down to the uh, knock sensors and they thought they must use the wire somewhere else. What we found out was this little controller here was popping fuses. As soon as you put a fuse in it go pop you know, when you turn on the key. So we had to put one of these on there. Now, this thing's plug and play on these. You just put it on there, plug it in and you run with it. Uh, but uh, if you look at the schematic of it, it's just got one ground and one power. Now there is another ground over there that's hooked to the uh, center high mount stoplight, but you know, anyway. Alright, the speed of processing is really important. Ford faced the same problem, so they waited a little while until they had a processor that was fast enough to handle throttle commands, and that was their Black Oak processor. Uh, and that's, that's these kind of here, like you see, it's got those three connectors in there. That's what my Explorer's got on, it's one of those. And uh, also on my pickup truck. And, uh, all right, uh, when a concern is present, you'll see some kind of warning light, some you know, wrench light, you know, some of your early Fords had those on there. Um, that's uh, the one that we were working on that I told you I had priced out the uh, throttle body and the, uh, what we found out that was eventually, that thing kept turning on a wrench light and it would only have half throttle. It wouldn't have all, it wouldn't, completely lose throttle control, but you only had about half throttle, which would be like 45 miles an hour, uh, kind of limp in mode thing. And it turned out that that car had been wrecked and it had a wire that was compromised down there that was on the way to the engine controller and it was rubbing against the ground. And every now and then when that wire would rub against the ground, the computer would drop into a mood of only give you know, turn on the ridge slot and only give you part of the throttle. Now in order to hold the throttle plate open at one position, the current is typically pulsed at about a thousand hertz, which is a thousand times a second. A hertz is one hertz is one time per second. All right, with this fast current pulse, the magnetic field is retained rather than falling between the pulses. So you don't have a magnetic field that's dropping away every time. These are happening so fast, they're sort of causing a magnetic field to float. You got it? All right, the electric motor to hold the throttle blade steady without movement that way. So that way, you know, it's not bouncing back and forth real fast. They're actually able to feather that thing quick enough you know, where it's keeping it, right where it wants it to be. Now, I'm going to mention this at the end of the video again, but keep your fingers out of the throttle body because that thing, you think the spring closes the throttle? Uh-uh. That thing is closed by these, by magnetic pulses, these motors will close that throttle body. If you stick your finger in there and that thing decides to close the throttle body, it will not stop until your finger is cut off. So keep your dadgum hands out of the throttle body. Normal mode. This mode is selected. Power up remains active until the problem is detected. Once the problem is there, it will take the appropriate action. Limit performance mode, that's what I was talking about on that Ford 500, is activated when the driver intent can't be determined or when the output of the engine power is impaired. The maximum power is lowered, throttle bay control is slowed, and a warning lamp is activated. Forced idle mode is when you've got nothing but idle because it feels it, it just cannot trust what's happening there. And uh, the engine will start and run, but you won't be able to get that. I an interesting thing, too. I had one of these little uh, uh, PDAs, uh, scopes, that, that you might have, uh, little PDA scopes, an American-made uh, handheld scope. It was absolutely wonderful. I love that thing. I've actually shown some patterns now and again from that scope. But the crazy thing about it was that scope, you had to have an attenuator or something, uh, or maybe a resistor or whatever, because when you would go into the throttle, uh, the, you know, the accelerator pedal sensor on that thing, you could read the voltage changes on the scope, but the engine controller would not respond to pedal movement. It was really weird. It would, and that was just very strange to me uh, that I could read it on the scope. I had also seen that same PDA, that uh, Intero PDA is what, what it was, uh, and it, it finally died and I couldn't get any, you know, there was no way to get it fixed, uh, but I'd just love to have a brand new one of those things right now. But anyway, when I connected that thing to uh, the crank sensor on a Jeep uh, Cherokee without a resistor, it 
you know, in series with the meter, I mean with the scope, it absolutely would not, uh, it would it would short that signal low enough to where the, the vehicle wouldn't start, even though you showed a signal on your scope. I always hate that kind of thing. All right, power management mode is activated when the ECT system can't reliably control electronic throttle. I meant to put ETC. Can't reliably control the engine power using the throttle. The throttle is disabled so it can refer to the default position. Uh, engine power is controlled using fuel and spark only. That's caused by an inability to position the throttle blade to command the value or complete loss of TPS information has occurred. Now there's engine shutdown mode. If it can't process the thing and it's afraid you're going to get run away and crash because of drive-by wire, it'll shut it completely down. All right. Don't ever open the throttle body with your fingers. Some of them, you know, you know some of them can be ruined. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about ruining your fingers. In that particular statement, uh, this friend of mine uh, that's got a shop over here, here, he had a uh, a Nissan or some Asian car, and he was fooling with the throttle body. He had it in his hand, and this is a guy that like to get his hand off. That's a good mechanic, but a lot of times he fools around with stuff he shouldn't. I call him Black Cloud because it seems like he has bad luck sometimes. Anyway, he pushed that throttle body open with his finger. That's all he did was push it over with a finger one time. It worked fine before then. And after he put it back on there, it never worked again. Now, you can scoff at that if you want to, and you can play Russian roulette by doing it a bunch of times to see which time it fails. But I always think about what's at stake. I don't want to have to buy somebody a throttle body because I opened it with my finger playing around with it. You've got no reason to do that. If it's on the vehicle and you want to clean the throttle body, you got everything hooked up. You don't even have to have the engine running. You can have somebody get in there or you can put your stick on the between the seat and the pedal. I mean and you can open it with the uh, with the with that, you know, gas pedal on the inside, the accelerator pedal, just whoop and it'll it'll open up. Uh, and you can make darn sure that while it's opened up you don't put your finger in there because again, if their foot slips off that pedal, it's gonna cut your finger off. And that's what that next statement's about. Now I got a surprise for you guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to launch into a wild card test. It's not about electronic throttle control, but it's a 10 question test and the answers come afterwards. Each slide runs 10 seconds and you can pause it if you need to. And this is just one of those little fun tests that doesn't hurt a doggone thing. And so uh, let me know what you think about this and, uh, you know, bring me some more subscribers. I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you get something out of it. Have a good week.